What's up fight fans? Welcome to my channel. This is Johnny and in today's video we're going to be going over the statistics that nobody talks about when mentioning Jaime Munguia's last fight where he took on Eric Bazignan. Guys, before I continue, I want to say thank you to all the new subscribers. Thank you to everybody who's been with me since day one. And if you haven't already, could you please hit the notification button? What that'll do for me is every time I put something new out there, you'll be the first to be notified. Thank you. Guys, on the same weekend as Riyadh season Wembley, the night before, Friday night in America, Saturday morning here in Australia, we got to see Top Rank put on a card in Glendale, Arizona, highlighted by the return of Jaime Munguia versus Eric Bazignan. Guys, this was a good fight, man, and I have to be honest with you. I took heat. I've always taken heat for my adoration of Munguia. I've always liked Munguia, even before the Canelo fight. Everybody said his record was cab drivers and tomato cans, but say what you want about Munguia. When you looked at him a few years ago, you saw the tools there, you saw the skill set there, but more importantly, from my perspective, my day job is I'm a coach. People hire me to help them get healthy and stay healthy. So part of that is having vision when it comes to seeing skill sets or seeing potential in people. And a few years back, watching Mungia box, you could see there was potential there. It was raw talent. And fight after fight, you see him growing. You see him adding tools to his toolbox. And this is why I've always said I've cheered for him. And more than anything as well, when he's in a fight, He's what you call a rhythm fighter. He's not a guy that gets out on top early. He usually has to get momentum rolling through a fight. But then when he starts letting his hands go, he is a joy to watch. In this video, I'm going to break down the narrative of that scorecard. We know that Munguia got Bazignan out of there in the 10th, but it was a close fight. I had Bazignan up on a lot of the cards early on in that fight. The first five rounds, three or four of them I gave to Bazignan. His jab was on point and he was sharp. But the narrative moving forward was, will he be able to keep that technical display as the fight grew deeper and deeper? And will he be able to take the power of Munguia? We're gonna talk about the overall punch output. We're gonna talk about the jabs. We're gonna talk about the power punches and the statistics behind the scenes regarding how this fight played out. I should also mention before I continue, Munguia likes to stay active. So this is a bit of breaking news. He's already talking about his next fight taking place in December. So stay tuned to the end of the video. I'll talk a little bit more about who that'll be against. Guys, Jaime Munguia took a little time to get going, but when he did, the end was near. The Mexican super middleweight star rebounded from May's defeat to Canelo Alvarez with a 10th round knockout Friday evening over the previously unbeaten Eric Bazignan at Desert Diamond Arena in Glendale, Arizona. Bazignan initiated the early rounds with a sharp jab followed by occasional right hands as Munguia calmly closed the distance. The 27-year-old fighting pride of Tijuana had success when he aimed at the body, but Bazignan had his moments as well. Then head trainer Eric Morales urged Munguia to increase the pressure, and Munguia hurt Bazignan with body shots in the sixth and hard rights to the head in the seventh. Bazignan regained his composure in the following rounds, and Munguia conserved in the ninth, setting the stage for the climatic tenth. It was a fight I had to do intelligently. He's strong. He hits hard. So we had to break him down and be careful with shots to the body. And in the 10th round, that's when I decided to come out with everything. And that's how we got the knockout, Munguia said. There are great things to come. Great fights at 168. There's Caleb Plant, Edgar Berlanga, Christian Mabili. There are great fights. And we will give great wars as well. Bazignan said, I felt like I was winning. I felt he was very frustrated with my jab, my right hand encounters. He was getting tired. Then all of a sudden, I got caught. I don't know what happened there. Guys, if you would have watched the fight, I don't want to totally disagree with Bazignan. He was sharp early his jab was well early but the thing about boxing it's a 12 round fight it's about can you carry what you have in the first few rounds into the middle and deep rounds can you carry what you have in the middle rounds into the championship rounds and now when we look back on Mungia's record people will start understanding that all of that experience he's only in his mid-20s just turned 27 isn't even the prime of his physical career yet and it's those rounds it's those fights that he has that is going to help carry him further in his career there are exciting matchups to make like all the aforementioned names the plants of the world i'd love to see a berlanga fight christian mabili 
let's take a closer look at the statistics of the fight. Guys, if we look at the total punches thrown, Munguia threw 497, landing 147 at a 30% clip. Bazignan threw 470, landing 79 at a 17% clip. So early on the total punches, Bazignan was pacing Munguia. He was pushing and pressuring him, and he was doing it all with that jab. And it was gonna be all about, will Bazignan be able to keep up the pace? It's that conditioning, it's that pressure that generally will separate the great fighters from the good fighters. And in this case, Bazignan just started to fade, Munguia saw it, smelled blood, and went for the kill. When we talk about the jabs, this was the most impressive tool for my insights about Bazignan. I really liked what he was doing. He threw 334, landing 47 at a 14% clip. Munguia threw 212, landing 43 at a 20% clip. So Bazignan's statistics, he threw over 100 more jabs, but only landed four more. A lot of his great work with the jab happened early, and Munguia's style is he wants to throw the jab just to get inside to set up his power shots. Bazignan was throwing the jab to disrupt Munguia's movement, and it was working. He was using it to disrupt the pressure and using his feet to get out of danger, but that only lasted for so long. The power shots is what told the story regarding the end is near. Munguia threw 285, landing 104 at a 37% clip, and Bazignan threw 136, landing 32 at a 24% clip. Guys, you can't do both regarding the tail of the fight. It's really difficult to dominate the jab story and dominate the power punches story. You kind of have to pick one or the other depending on your game plan. And if the fighter who's choosing to use power and body shots ends up outlanding and outthrowing the fighter with the jab, the guy throwing the jab is gonna lose nine times out of 10. Meaning, Munguia's game plan was to get through Bazignan's jab, pressure Bazignan, put him on his back foot, and land more power shots and see if he would melt. And he eventually did in the 10th round. It was an exciting fight. It was an exciting finish. You got to see that rhythm of Munguia. He's like a machine that takes slow to get going. I, he kind of reminds me of when you look at the interconnections of a watch, how the clock has these grinds and wheels that slowly wind up. And when they get wound really tight, they move faster and faster. That's the best analogy I could give when I watch a Jaime Munguia fight. He's exciting. He's only 27. There's a lot of names on the horizon. One of those names is Ronald Gavril, a light heavyweight. This is the name that has been thrown around in the last 10 hours that Munguia is fighting in December. Gavril allegedly is going to come down from light heavy to fight Munguia at 168. It'll be a good test for Munguia to see where his power stands with a kid coming from light heavy. Gavril has fought Benavidez in the past and he dropped him. So you kind of want to think from a Munguia standpoint, it'd be good to see what he looks like against Gavril before he takes on bigger challenges and bigger fights. Guys, let me know what you think about this fight did you watch it let me know what you think about Jaime Munguia what's next for him leave all that in the comment section below